you got to hand it to blind prostitutes. Welcome, everybody, to the KQ Show, Episode 11, Part 1, Instructional Guide for Your Listening Pleasure. For those new to the show, hi, I'm Kyle. I'm just like everyone else. I wake up, do nude jumping jacks in my dog's kennel, then start my day. As a young lad, I had what my parents would call the gift of gab. I love conversations, laughing, and really just learning from people. I'll be chatting with business owners, musicians, porcupine repair technicians, and yesterday. Today's episode brings us talking with the number one realtor, part one. I chat with Kate Hill, a great realtor and friend. She explains her struggle after the loss of a soulmate and the battle she made to be positive, successful, and launch her real estate career. So please, enjoy the show. KQ Show. Welcome everyone to the KQ Show, episode 11. Today's guest, a fellow John Adams High School grad, studied business management at Indiana University, currently a realtor agent at the home team at Century 21, She's balling out of control in the real estate biz, the Katie Hill. Well, thank yes, you. I'm calling you Katie, okay? Because uh, to start this, like, I had texted you and I, because uh, I, I love your social media. You're always very positive. You know, good stuff. So thank you. I'm like, where, why haven't I? So I got rid of the wrong, like, you have Kate and Katie. Okay? I do, yes. So I'm looking, I'm like, Where'd all this shit go? I'm like, I'm like going, why? Like, I see that uh, somebody said, uh, hey, welcome back in like 2014 yeah, or something. Yeah, I go, yeah. I go, and then I'm thinking, man, okay, I'm, am I just in a time warp? Like, I'm like, I know you post, I knew you just got a new gig. I'm like, where? So yeah. I haven't liked anything on your regular Facebook because I'm like, is she, maybe she has a business. I'm like looking everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's very amusing, the whole name thing right now, because it has come up more in probably the past like three months with my new gig, especially because my legal name, my given name, is Kathleen. So anything legally is under Kathleen, so my real estate license is under Kathleen. So Century 21, my new um, brokerage, they have me up as Kathleen. Um, I'm Katie around here. That's what I introduced myself as. Kate happened in college. Mm -hmm. So my college roommate, I had went potluck on and she, probably six hours after we knew each other, she just looked at me and she said, can I call you Kate? Katie makes you sound like you're 12. <laughs> so I was like, okay. My mom calls me Kate, a couple of friends here and there. And I'm also Hildo to yeah. like the inner peeps of my life too. So um, my college roommate who I just talked about passed away um, in 2013. We can talk about that later. But... I got rid of my social media after she passed away and I was just really overwhelmed with stuff and she came, came from a small town and people were reaching out to me wanting to know details on things and she was super private and so I just got rid of it. Well, my boss called me into his office, I was in the title world at this time, and said, I can't believe I'm going to ask you this, but did you delete all these real estate agents? off of Facebook. And I was like, what are you talking about? Cause he is an attorney and he hated social media anyway. And he was like, people are calling, threatening to pull their business because they thought I deleted them. Not really realizing I deleted my entire Facebook page. Mm, yeah. So there are a lot of pictures and memories on my Katie Hill one that I just haven't been able to get off. <laughs> so I started a new one as Kate and I never realized <laughs> what a shit show <laughs> it was going to cause. But yeah, so you will find the Katie one still yeah. here. There's no activity. But I, you're, I wasn't following your real one. Oh, okay. I was following your other one. <laughs> it's so funny because Aaron Fruji, who we're both friends with, um, when they announced, when Century 21 Affiliated announced my joining their brokerage in the home team, they put up the Kathleen picture. And he <laughs> responded and he said, who's Kathleen? So my response is, ask Cheryl Hill, my mom. Like, ask Cheryl because... That's just how it is. But yeah, so that's really funny. But yeah, Katie or Kate's fine. Um, actually, it's worked out really well because if people call me Kate, I know they don't really know me. So that's like a, yeah, it's like a, like, it's oh. Kind of, mm -hmm. She's like, hang on, you got to put your business face on. Yes. Katie, yeah, what up? <laughs> Kate, yes. <laughs> Hilda, I'm like, what's up, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hilda's probably not something you want to put on a card. 
Might be in the wrong business. <laughs> oh my gosh, when my really good friend um, had his kids and he wanted me to be Aunt Hildo. And I, <laughs> no. I said, mm, I think we should wait. <laughs> Maybe let's wait till they're like 13. Like, we don't want yeah, them to get suspended. Let's wait till like I got the nickname in middle school. So like, let's wait because... You know, I could just see them going to school and be like, yeah, Aunt Dildo came over. Yeah, like, my parents are playing with dildos all the time. <laughs> <laughs> dildo always comes over real drunk. <laughs> smell, smell like Luda wine. No, no, I do want to talk about this, this Snoop wine. So, that's pretty awesome. First off, uh, so, A, for all the future guests, uh, you know, she brought me a gift. So, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. She might have a repeat uh, episode. <laughs> so it's pretty legit. Um, like I told you, you know, I, I, I can't really taste wine too well. It's got a sense of smell, but um, first sip was awesome. Like it doesn't taste like regular wine. It's not not it's dry. A, yeah, it's a blend. So it's uh, 19 Crimes, Snoop's Cali Red. Um, I like a dry wine, but not too dry. Can't, you know, just a tad sweet. So that's kind of, it's very smooth. Yeah, it is. Like, it's dangerously smooth. It's dangerous. I'm going to be popping that bottle open. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it's... hour five of the podcast. <laughs> Listen, I'm... motherfuckers. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Thank you for listening. My hard drive is full. <laughs> we, we just, you know, we'll just start busting into <laughs> ain't none but a G thing. Like, it'll be fine. It'll, oh, it'll be for good. sure. <laughs> So what? The, so talk about your your gig. So is this is this a promotion or I mean what is no, this something so different? No, so it's just a little something different. So in the real estate world, um, real estate agents, um, our we're independent contractors. Mm -hmm. In the state of Indiana, if your first three years, you have to work under a managing broker. So your brokerage is so um, Century Twenty One affiliated is my new brokerage. I joined the home team which is a group of established agents, uh, Barry Skelsky, Jen Lilly, uh, Stacey Netzel, and Tanya Penister, formerly of Cressy and Everett. So they okay. were with Cressy for, gosh, I mean, combined, I think like 15 years maybe. I was their closer in the title world. Um, and then I left title at the end of 19 um, to do the Airbnb management, and I had to get licensed to do that. Plus, I was just kind of sick of referring all this money out to all these, all my friends, to all these agents, because they make, agents make a good living. So, so, hold on, so you weren't, at that time you weren't an agent yet then? No, I was only oh, entitled. Oh, so buying houses and you were just, I'm just like, okay. oh, they'd come to me and be like, who do you recommend? And I would refer them out and, you know, I'd make my hourly wage in the title at the mm -hmm. closing table at the end. So, um, but being single and commission only, as real estate agents do work, is hard and scary. Um, so anyways, this opportunity came up to manage Airbnbs for, um, Notre Dame rentals and then get my license on the side, kind of dual income type thing. And then the pandemic hit. Mm. So I literally started my real estate classes January 3rd of 2020. I was done with my classes, state license by February 24th of 2020. So I did in six weeks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's fat. I mean, so did, has anybody ever done that before? Or like, are um, you, is that like I'm a... sure they have. Uh, when I took the exam with the state, they had kind of made a comment. They were like, because the criteria on the exams are a little bit different now. It's, yeah. it's the test is not as easy as people think it is. So, especially after the crash in 09 and you know all that stuff. So yeah, it's more um, about this damn house. Yeah, yeah. So, but my title background, I kind of, I'm a. I'm a why girl. If somebody tells me to do something, it's I want to know why. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to work for an attorney for seven years that took the time to really um, dissect what the contract means and, yeah. you know, different vesting and all that sort of stuff on the back end after a contract is signed. So it just kind of naturally felt like one of those things like, now how do I get to that point where you, you know, get a contract signed? So um, probably a little ambitious in the six weeks, but I did it. And then the pandemic hit. So I... Oh, shit, yeah. That's like Mario. Like a, a couple weeks right after yeah, you we passed that Yeah, we were supposed to announce the big new um, company and all that, like, on St. Patrick's Day. And the world went to shit on the 16th. Yeah. So I didn't really know what I was going to do and finally kind of decided in July of 2020 to just throw my hat in and try real estate full time. And I was kind of walking on thin a thin line, mm -hmm. you want to say, just in my mind, especially because I had been a colleague of all these agents for a decade. Yeah. And now kind of coming on their side of the fence, like I was the title girl. I was the one they went to. Yeah. And now I'm, you know, and I'm a people pleaser. So it was just kind of weird. <laughs> 
So I make the big announcement July 22nd of 2020. Like, I make this, like, first day of kindergarten, like, uh, post. Yeah. And lo and behold, July 23rd of 2020, I got hired by Pat and Sue Mulligan to sell Mulligan's Barton Grill as my very first real estate transaction. Oh, wow. So it was like a, yeah, it's like a business one. So like, a, wow. Huge. To the point where, because um, I had joined um, a very small uh, brokerage first and loved every minute of it. It was um, just two other women and myself. And um, so like when Sue and Pat tell me this, my exact quote to them, they said, you're not understanding. We want you to sell the bar. And I said, that's the stupidest fucking thing you could ever do. I was like, I've been like, <laughs> been in the game a day. Like, yeah. You know, and this is commercial, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Pat just said to me, if there's anybody that we're going to pay to do this, like, it's going to be you. We know you're going to give your all. I'd run a lot of charity events with them over the years and stuff, mm -hmm. as I have with Backer and that. So I, for 353 days, did nothing but that, but sold it for five times the amount that they had bought it for two, two wow. years prior. So that's awesome. It was really cool. Yeah. And so then, um, and that was that was full commission then. Yeah. So right. Okay. Got you. We yeah. You split your commission um, with the buyer's agent, and then you split. You have a split with your broker. Gotcha. But it was nice, and the I can't. Pat and Sue Mulligan are just amazing people, and the support they gave me through that. So fast forward to Christmas of twenty one. Um, I was talking to some colleagues and Barry Skowski from the home team who I had been his closer for all these years. And he just said, why don't you come to lunch with me? Like, let's just talk about some things. Cause I was kind of on the fence if I even wanted to stay in real estate anymore, blah, 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 long thing. And he kind of just came out the gate and said, I think we might be a good fit for you. I'm a team girl. So I work better with people. Real estate's cutthroat. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's hard and especially in this market. So the office is right around the corner from my house. It's 11 houses away. Oh, that's awesome. And I just have this like support and guidance from them that, um, not saying that my other brokerage wasn't giving me, it's just a little bit more and just kind of more my feel um, of having this support system of, you know, for other people to help me help my clients, which is ultimately the goal. So yeah, yeah made the big switch just in March nice. and here I am. So, so you like it? I mean, I love it. Yeah, so I've done just a little over my first year because really I closed on Mulligans in July of 21. So that's kind of where I start, basically, I would say. I've done almost $4 million, Nice. So which is pretty decent. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so this market's crazy, as everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good thing for wine and tequila. Yeah. It gets yeah. us through. So, yeah, I wrote two deals today. So knock on wood that my... Offers will get accepted for my people. And nice. we'll see how it goes. Good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's what one thing that, because um, I, I just like to talk to people that are motivated, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I just think, you know, when I see your, uh, which actually, um, Super Soul Sundays. Yes. So I was scrolling through, again, um, because you're boring on, you haven't posted anything for like seven years uh, on my social media. So, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, so I'm, I'm going, I'm going to go back, oh my God, here it is. So I'm just going through it and everything. And I, I really like, how did that start? Like, where, you know, because I bet you have the, you know, Wisdom Wednesdays. Yeah. And you have a lot of stuff. So how did, yeah. where, where did that come from and how did it start? So I'm long-winded and it's kind of, it is a hell of a story. But um, I've really enjoyed your podcast listening to about the mental health stuff that you talk about. So my beautiful, lovely um, college roommate that we talked about earlier, who um, ended up in my mind being my soulmate, um, that gave me the Kate name, um, Really long story short, she passed away in August of 13 from a very rare form of uterine cancer. She left three babies behind, a beautiful husband, just like that picture perfect kind of mm -hmm. family, um, had asked me to make sure to stick around and take care of her kiddos, you know, with her husband, they're six hours away. And of course, I was honored and coming from a chick who never has, I've never wanted children. It was yeah. just kind of this weird I went through the survivor guilt type thing of like, why am I still here? Like, I'm not married. I don't have kids. That time didn't feel very established. And she just had like everything she ever wanted. And I went to a really dark place for a while to the point I had noticed that I was slipping into a hole that I couldn't get out of. Um, and I went home. So I went to my mom and dad and I just said, listen, this is kind of where I'm at. Um, 
I, I need I need to come home. Plus, I wanted to buy a lake house. That was part of the reasoning, but I needed my mommy more mm-hmm. than anything. I got you. So I went home in January 15. Um, that's when I got Herman, my dog, who um, I say saved me. But I just kind of went through this. I'm back at home. I'm in my 30s. You know, I lost my best friend. And I legit was watching Super Soul Sunday. Oprah <laughs> did a show called Super Soul Sunday. And Iana Van Zandt was on it, and she had, and I'm such a people pleaser, and I felt like I was taking care of everyone else but myself. Yeah. And she had this quote, and it said, you do not need to explain your no. So if you say no, you don't need to explain, you know, because it's yeah. innate. And I was like, and it just kind of like hit me like, no, you're right. Yeah. Yes, bitch, yes. Like That's badass. You know? Yeah, yeah. And from that, like, I started digging deeper into some of her other interviews and Brene Brown. If you have not heard of her, I challenge everyone to Google or YouTube her TED Talk. And she talks about shame. What I love about Brene Brown is that she is not a clinical doctor. She's a, so, um, she's a social worker who researches shame and talks about how it's okay to feel this way. She has these things called FFTs, first fucking times. And how to navigate through feeling things for the first time because it's so new. Yeah. And that, and it really just helped me kind of heal, grow, and really look at what really matters in life. And forgiveness is a huge thing. Like, I was very angry at God. I was very angry, the universe, and just a lot of stuff after Amanda died. And, you know, I was very mad, like, like I said, why me not, you know, why her not me type thing. But then it was like, we're all here for a reason. Everyone has their shit. Mm-hmm. Um, holding grudges is the worst. Forgive people for, not for them, but for you. Um, and tell people you fucking love them. And people actually, I think since probably 2016 is when I really started. Um, 2018, I feel like it really blossomed into myself. That's actually mm-hmm. when I got my Pisces tattoo. Um and because I'm a true Pisces through and through. Wait, wait when did you read it? March 8th. Oh, I'm February 26th. Oh, there you go. Yes. So, you know, we're sensitive beings, super sensitive. I feel energies and it's very weird. And I finally started to embrace it. Like, I kind of hid that for how deep I really am on my feelings and stuff for a very long time. And now I'm like, this is me, bitches. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't like it, so yeah. Yeah, I don't really care anymore. Yeah. You know, um, I will. I am that friend that sends random messages like, hey, I just want to let you know I love you. Because I'm telling you, not knowing if you're ever going to get to do that again. That's huge. It's a it, big message. It really is. And like the loss that I felt after Amanda died, I never want that for anyone. Like her babies are, were six, four, and two when she passed away. Um, they are now 15, almost 14, wow. and 11. And they're amazing. Yeah. You know, and I tell them all the time. I text that, you know, I'm Aunt, I'm Aunt Kate. They they still call me Kate. That's okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the Super Soul Sunday came from that just to kind of, you know, put good energy out. I feel like what you put out, you get back. Yeah. I and that. I really look back. And when I was negative and putting negative stuff out, I felt it was coming back on me. Um, Wisdom Wednesday just kind of came from that. Tell it Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thoughtful Thursdays. <laughs> Uh, Friday feels. That's so, what it was. Friday feels. Yep. yep. And uh, motivation Mondays. So, nice. Yeah. Not like Saturdays it. are just selfie Saturdays. They're supposed to be. I don't really do yeah. those much anymore. Herman and I did a good run on those, but yeah, I um have been more surprised at people that reach out after I post them. That really, they're like, "Hey, I needed that," or "Thank you," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." I really post them for myself. It's kind yeah. of like my online journal, but. Yeah, so that's where those came from. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Nah, because, because they are cause in, in a social media filled with uh, 3 a.m. girl thoughts, which drive me nuts. And honestly, I just troll those type of – if you put, like, it just the most – just random stuff that makes no sense. I don't understand it. Like, don't look up when you can also look left. And it's like, what? Like, don't walk down the pier when you can swim to the boat. And it's just stuff that's just nonsense. It's like, come on. What, is, what, what does it even mean? And – uh and again, I'm just recently exposed as of like, you know, yesterday, midday to uh, your actual social media. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. I came, if something came up that you liked my last one, I think I, or it wasn't my super soul, but it, something I posted a couple days ago and this morning and I saw it. I was like, oh, he's trolling my shit right now because we're getting sure ready to talk. Yeah, because I'm sitting here going, how does she so much? She's real. She's got to, it's got to be somewhere. And I'm like, 
I'm like, just get, maybe, maybe she goes by a more professional name. And then I go, well, son of a bitch, here it is. <laughs> I feel bad. What if I didn't know you got horribly fired because of some crazy thing and I'm, I'm having you come on and talk about your gig? Oh my gosh, and that picture from 2013, <laughs> it's that black and white one with the Colts scarf that's just in... <laughs> It happens. Uh, it happens. I confuse people. I'm walking contradiction sometimes with that sort of stuff, though, too. Because, like, I think I posted about, I had a guy one time tell me that I needed to dumb myself down if I was ever going to find anyone. <laughs> it's like, a good way to get out of a conversation with a female immediately. <laughs> that's a great, it's a great for, <laughs> how'd you get dumped? Let me tell you why. First off, <laughs> it was one of those, like, kind of set up things it wasn't like an actual date but like they brought him to linebackers oh, who yeah, like yeah. mimi and i can't stand that i know i'm there I too it happens hate it and but it was like really good friends so i was like okay they might think they know what they're doing but whatever and we're like talking and he he did kind of know me but he was like i just don't get you he's like one minute you're in heels the next minute you're in your sweatpants and then he's like you don't like you you're out brunching but yet you're watching football on sundays because i'm a fantasy football girl so i haven't done it the last couple of years but my first two years i won my leagues like right that in there. yeah yeah i'm gonna and, do it i'm gonna do the wednesday fantasy football show oh yeah that's so, amazing yeah. Oh, absolutely yeah you know it, the game's changed a lot over the last couple of years but i'm still a huge the extra game mentally broke me yeah stat wise like it's a whole extra game i'm like why i'm real bad at math because the <laughs> school that i went to uh but hey uh, that's not fair i'm a math queen math okay. sold me mulligans and Were i you... was on the math quiz bowl team okay in, exactly, in exactly. So you, can't, you can't say that type you can't say oh, I, I thought adam did a great job what were you no honors math i was taking the advanced algebra yeah. no no I, I was smoking weed in somebody's mustang that didn't have reverse we had to push it out of the parking lot so <laughs> I did take honors in English, so that really helped. I did like, because I was always really good at English and writing mm -hmm. and everything like that. And uh, who'd I have? What was, her, what was her name? Well, Sweet, yep, Sweet, Sweet Act. Act. Yeah, yeah. So do you never, you had never had Norma Hoffman? Mrs. Hoffman? Oh. No, there was a different one. So there was, there was I, I had, I had Sweet Act and there was the other one. Yeah. So no, I, I didn't. Well, she, no, yeah. Well, Hoffman, what, so you only did, so you did senior. Yeah, just senior. Oh, okay. Right no, on. Hoffman was a sophomore um, honors. So uh, Adams, oh, we're jumping, but that's okay. So Adams was. That's what we do on the show. Okay, good. So Adams, right in my eighth grade year at Edison, was the year that they were thinking of closing Adams. Mm -hmm. Remember, and then they decided not to. Well, my parents at that time had decided that they were going to send me to Marion or St. Joe, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" I was like, "No!" Like I, I was an athlete, and I wanted mm -hmm. to keep playing with the girls yeah, I'd yeah. been playing with, you know, and all this. And um, so we had a deal that I had to maintain a 3.5 GPA, and I could had to take honors in AP classes. Did you ever go to IUSB then? I did, yeah. So I did a semester at IUSB. Like, I did all four years down in Bloomington, and then they forgot that I was supposed to take this resume-building class, a one-credit class. So um, they wanted me to come up here and graduate up here, and I was like, a hell to the no. I went to Bloomington because of Bobby Knight. He got fired my freshman year. I'm graduating in assembly mm -hmm. hall. Like, there's no yeah. hands or butts. So I finagled my way into coming up as a visiting student to finish and but to stay on your parents insurance you had to do a full semester yep. so i did a full semester and i took this ethics class that i wanted to take and another history class whatever looking back on it besides my social life down at iu and meeting the people that i did because it was life-changing with meeting amanda and my other college roommates i would have done iusb yeah it was so nice to not be a number like, we were our social security numbers down in Bloomington. Because those were our student ID numbers back then. Wow. So it's because there's just so many people? They, yeah. They, that's what your ID, your your student number was your social security number. And our classes were three, 400 people. Wow. So if they took attendance, you had a bubble sheet, and you'd write in your social security number. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So then you'd find a buddy in class, and you'd switch social... Think about this. Switch social security. <laughs> I'm like, that just doesn't seem safe. <laughs> have people check you into class like steal my identity while you're at yeah. it like, yeah you know that's what happened when you graduated in 04 from college but whatever Jeez. so did you have to, so did you have to do then uh like your uh your speech night or whatever you had i don't know if you guys had to do that at bloomington yeah we had um our public speaking mm -hmm. one um and my voice used to shake really bad and probably you can even tell now like i when i get nervous and that but and my professor actually was like take a shot of whiskey that's right that's what I did. That's what my professor told me. He said, "Take honey whiskey." I did it before my speech. I cleared my throat out and shit. 
I was like, Prof, that's, we could have been kicking it for a long time, man. I'll bring some whiskey was, in every day. I was 18. <laughs> yeah, I was like 19, yes. I think. Yeah, I was 18 or 19, same thing. Funny enough, I did, in fact, have a bottle of whiskey in the car. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. You think you think you hitting a joint or no? Just, <laughs> sir, don't bring all good, the drugs in your good car thing, in here. Good thing my college roommates only drink whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> except for Amanda did have vodka back in the day because I'll never forget the day we used to have the water bottles in our uh, your dorm fridge. And the top shelf was supposed to be water, bottom shelf vodka. And it was hot. I'm sweating. I come home. I open up a bottle and just slam it. Oh. And I'm telling you, half the bottle is down my throat before my taste buds and everything realizes that, that ain't water. That's vodka. And it came right back I was going to have to. Yeah. You're like, I left it in the tray. I left it. And she came in. And I was like, you going to clean that up. That's on you. <laughs> she, she, she flipped it. She goes, and move this one up here to the top. Yes. Well, yeah, so yes. so for, for my speech that I did, so like, um. At Iowa State, everybody's procrastinators. You have to, as an Iowa State, if you're in uh, that, uh, you know, I guess it kind of intertwined a lot. So if you had any type of public speaking, you had to go and watch one of the speeches. So everybody was just procrastinating, right? So, uh, and I gave a stellar speech. Uh, it's pretty easy for me. I mean, it's, public speaking was easy. So uh, everybody else was like, so I just I was like, awesome, cool. What'd you do it on? I have um, to know. So I did it on uh, proper masturbation. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, she said, said I, I took she human said, sexuality in college she as a virgin, and it was horrible. <laughs> no, no, I, I did on um, uh, a work life balance because um, okay. I had been working a ton and going to school okay. a ton, and I was like, uh, so basically, I had this whole thing, it, it, you know, then I was like, oh, cool. So then, of course, the whole class votes for me to have to go to speech night. So and I'm like, all right, um, cool. So they say the night that uh, that I got to do it was the last speech of the year. So every single kid had to wait, you know, basically be procrastinated as shit. So it's 800 people, all right? And I know that doesn't sound like, like a lot, like, you know, if you're like a stadium, no, I was more like, a, but like, you know, you go out there and there's just, there's just like, a, um, there's it's so much. And this is like, you know, it, it was a stadium. It's not like you have bright lights you can't see. No, you just see everyone. Yeah. So I was like, I got to prep this. So I had three of my buddies right up front. I was like, all right, hey, you three cats, you're on time patrol. Because I got hit. Like, I, I sped the speech up at the end, too, and he was like, I, I go tap when I got 10 seconds left. And he was like, uh, oh, and Winston Churchill once said, blah, 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 blah. This is rapid fire. <laughs> so, but, but, so I get there, and same thing. My teacher's like, hey, you know, like a lot of singers do that and everything. It's like a, like a, either like a cinnamon or like a honey uh, whiskey yeah. clears your throat and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, pow, I'm ready to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm up there waiting on the, uh, the person in front of me, and it's a, uh, this is lady, right? She's out there, this mom, very serious, like a, like mic in her ear type of situation, like a TED talk, like she's done this a lot. And it's about her son dying in a drunk driving accident. Oh. Yeah. So, like, my... how do you follow that? And mine was, no, no. I mean, I had pictures of Family Guy, and I had, like, I yeah, my right. shit was funny. And I just, like, right away, I walk up, I go, ooh, tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, in retrospect, I was like, what did I do? And I wish I'm up there just doing my thing. Like, once you're in a zone, it was easy. I knew my stuff, right. everything else, and, you know, and everything else. Just get to the end, I had to rapid fire through it. But it was just like the war. Even my buddies go like, when when hers was done, I walk yeah, like, up. There's like, I don't know what. To, you know, I maybe blame the organizers joke. on that. They should know. They should have like done more yeah. of it. Like, I was, okay, I was like, yeah, go. thanks, Pro, for sending me on after that. Yeah. I was oh. like, hey. Uh, so mine was on seatbelt safety though, and I. Oh. Talked about <laughs> Did you have to go after uh, somebody that? We didn't have to do it like that, though. Like, it was just in our class. It was, like, only 30 Oh, people, yeah, I did mine so. in my class, and they voted for me to go to speech night. I, would, yeah. I didn't ask them to do that. I will tell you the most horrifying thing ever happened to me, though, public, like, speaking, is I took a class. So I have a minor in criminal justice. Um, for a very long time, I thought I was going to be an attorney. And, uh, but, so I took all these, like, my electives and stuff for all these law classes. So I took, um, it was law and public policy. And it was taught by an appellate judge from Indianapolis. So an appeals court judge for the Supreme Court of Indiana used to drive down to Bloomington on Monday nights and teach his classes only one night a week. And I remember A.J. Moye, who was on the IU basketball team, yeah. was in this class. And, like, he took attendance every class. There's, like almost 200 people in the class and he called you by name where you would stand up. So he kind of knew who you kind of were and stuff. 200 people every day? Every every class he did, he'd roll through them and you were just like, here, like he oh. wanted, like you don't miss his class. Yeah, he's, he's like, I drew pretty far for this year. Right. So um, AJ's not in one class and the next Monday he goes, like calls AJ out immediately. They had just come off a huge win um, and he was like, AJ, Moye, you here? And AJ's like, you know, stands up and he starts clapping. And he goes, good game, 
Saturday. Good game. He goes in good game earlier in the week. Because I think they had a game Tuesday or something. That's probably why I didn't come Monday or whatever it was. I don't know. He goes, you ever fucking miss my class again? I'll make sure you're riding that pine. And I was like, oh, this dude ain't messing around. He's like, sorry, like, sir. Yeah, like he did. He just like kind of sat down. Well, part of the class was um, you had to partner up with someone and do a pro and con about some whatever, some sort of public issue. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know anybody. I'm a, like a sophomore. Everyone in this class are juniors and seniors. And I end up, of course, getting some, I'm going to be stereotypical, your typical frat boy type who's just a stoner, mm. whatever. Never would return my phone calls. Like, we have to get together and do this. The day that we're supposed to go. Now, t you're in front of everyone. This judge already has me scared out of my fucking mind. Get up. My dude's not there. Just now, show up? He, just, he just decides not to come to class, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I've got the pro side. And the professor looks at me and he goes, go ahead and argue both sides. Wait, what? Like, wait, no, that wasn't the side. <laughs> you <laughs> like, didn't, uh, you can't just throw that down on me here. <laughs> you just can't, you can't do that to me. <laughs> and I just, like, I said, can I take a minute? <laughs> I'm just going to take off. <laughs> and he's like, go ahead. And I did it because I'm, I was that type of person because I had a feeling or whatever. And he looked at me at the end and he takes his glasses off. And, you know, he puts them in his mouth. He's got his head down. He's shaking. I'm like, I blew it. Mm -mm. Like, I'm just, give me my F, let me go. And he said, very good job. He goes, in fact, you can go ahead and leave and not come back. You got an A in this class. I never had to go back to class for the rest of the semester. What? That's pretty badass, <laughs> yeah. though. Um, I'm sure I peed my pants a couple times during it because I, and it wasn't like the greatest, but I think he just was like, okay, at least she's got, because I was bright red sweating. Like I had, because you had to wear business suits mm. and I'm sure I wore gray and it was like, you know, water yeah. just, <laughs> just you know, dripping just out. Just dripping out. Just like you're trying to hold on to the jacket and you're like, don't lift the arms. And <laughs> you gotta crush it. <laughs> half arm. Excuse me. The T Rex <laughs> arm wave. He probably just felt bad for me. He's like, man, this girl is sweating. Like, yeah, you can go ahead and take off. Maybe go see a doctor about that. <laughs> Toss you some degree. Here you go. Yes, but I hate talking in front of big groups. Hey, so I do want to talk. So um, being a real estate agent. So mm -hmm. I know that the past couple of years have been just crazy with uh, like the housing market and everything mm -hmm. else. What, um, I guess it's easy, easy enough question. So what, what's like one of the biggest misconceptions or myths about being a real estate agent that it's easy that <laughs> <laughs> you just sit there you want to laugh yeah um i there's bad apples in every industry yeah. so yeah. i think you know everyone's going to have different experiences that um that's why i say interview real estate agents before you use them you know it's the personality thing sometimes things aren't going to jive um the other th probably the biggest thing for me that I get upset when people think that all of us are just in it for the money and that we're going to, you know, especially in a market like this, like pushing people into buying houses that are way overpriced and all of that stuff. Um, I'm not going to say there aren't people that are like that, but a major the mass majority of your agents out there are not. Mm -hmm. I have actually lost clients in the last couple months that are first time home buyers because in my opinion, I don't think it's the right time for them to buy. I don't think the houses that they were wanting to were going to sustain their value over a three to five year right. period. Everybody's going to be different on if it's the right time for them to buy in that. Like a first timer coming into a house that's $180,000, like in my neighborhood in Edison Park right now, when two years ago they were 130. Not saying that it's not going to sustain that value. I'm just not really confident that in three to five years when they're ready to move on, that it's going to appreciate any more than that to where now it takes three to five years even to break even. And what if it market corrects itself and it corrects hard? Yeah. Those are the first neighborhoods that are going to hit. <clears throat> now, somebody who's moving into the neighborhood for the next 10 to 15 years, then interest rates are low. Like, yes, let's get right, in right. because those values have sustained now, you know, for a couple of years and they're going to stay there. Um, the misconception that we make too much money. Like, I think everybody kind of throws it out there. I'm not going to lie. There might be some times where even I'm like, oh, I didn't quote unquote work that hard, you know, and that's kind of a big chunk of money. 
But what people don't understand, like, we don't get that full money. Yeah, yeah, there's like a percentage you only get of. We get a percentage of that. Then we have a split percentage with our corporation. And then, like, I have a split then with my team. Um, But at the same time, there's a lot more that goes into it. Yeah. When you really sit back and think about it, um, you have to be very creative right now in the way that you're writing up contracts to help your people. You know, you're going up against five, six other offers. It's not like you're the only one in doing that. So... I think it's just the misconception that they don't care, that we don't care. You know, I almost get too involved because I look at every transaction, every client, like they're my brother or my sister, my mom or my dad, you know, um, coming out the gate and selling a commercial property for $1.75 million. Like that's a high that I'll never experience again. You know, like that's, it takes agents sometimes an entire career to even get there and for it to be my first one. But that's not where I put my clients. It's not like I'm only going to take clients that are going to give me high end stuff. Like right, right, right. I just sold a one bedroom, one bath in River Park for fifty three thousand. Right. And I was just as excited when we got that offer accepted that I was the day that we got the Mulligans one. You know what I mean? Like, um, the best investment on earth is earth. When you think about it, you know. What do you mean? You give, you own a piece of land. You'll eat for okay, eat yeah. forever. Gotcha. You know, like. The ultimate goal then is to own it outright, and then now you're borrowing off of yourself. You get a home equity line of credit. You know, you can pay for your wedding. You can pay for your kid's college. You can pay for your cars because a home equity line of credit interest rate is like 3%. Mm-hmm. You know, usually you can even find them where these credit unions do these, and they're like the first 12 months are interest-free. So you can get the new bathroom. You can get the new kitchen. You know, send your kid to college for the first year, and then you're paying yourself back. Yeah. You know, so – Owning property is a big deal, and it's one of the most important, and I think one of the biggest purchases in anyone's life, and to be able to be trusted to be a part of that and representing a buyer and something like that is amazing. I lose sleep over it. Like, I just had, Mm -hmm. um, I have clients right now, I think we looked at 24 properties before we finally got an offer accepted. We didn't write up 24, you know, we go look at them and that, because that's the problem too with technology and how good it's got. These pictures look amazing of these houses. Hey, with the the, the one thing, so when they do this, when they do the the zoom Zoom out, out. first off, so this, somebody was buying a house. I I, I, I go, go, no, 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 I go, no, no, no. That is, that that is not an island in the kitchen. That is something in the way. I go, I go take, so I showed, I showed, I backed up. I go, take a picture of my living room. Look, it's a hundred fucking yard uh, football field. (laughs) That pissed me off. I was like. It does. Yes. It's like literally you just zoom all like you're making. It's like, it's huge. Yes. I recently, um, actually my clients that we looked at all the, like I said, those are like 24 went to go look at this house and, um, even us as agents, like we get the MLS sheet, you know, there's stuff that we have information on that's not on your Zillow and not on your realtor.com and stuff like that, that the other agent will put in just like, Hey, FYI, there's, you know, this crack here that's getting fixed or, you know, this sort of stuff. And we're in the house and there are three or four wind air air conditioner window units. And I'm like looking and I'm like, looking at the MLS sheet, you know, cause usually it'll save it. And I'm like, I wouldn't have picked this house for us to come see if we didn't have central air. Cause that's a big expense. Yeah. 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 We're already at the top of their budget. And we're looking, and my client goes, oh, my gosh, they scrubbed out the air conditioner units in the pictures. And we looked at the listing online, and they did. They photoshopped out the air conditioning units. And I was like, and immediately my people were like, I don't trust this agent. Like, I don't want to buy a house. Yeah. You know? And How did they do that, like, though? Did they, they, they Photoshop. No, I'm saying, did they advertise it as having central air? Nope, they didn't oh, put it okay, in there, okay, but okay, they just okay. took it out of the just pictures knowing the... because they know. Was oh, just random empty holes in windows? <laughs> no, it was yeah. just, you know, it was just, it, they call it scrubbing. So they just kind of take wow. it out and they'll like, you know, put, like add drapes or something over it, you know, or... Just like you said, the pictures and making them told my uh, sellers like Airbnb it. What would you? What would your house look like if it was on Airbnb? Take off the personal pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like um, only have two throw pillows. Don't have fifteen. <clears throat> yeah, like yeah, yeah. One, you know, that sort of stuff, and kind of minimalize that the distractions. Because you'll catch, I mean, I do it. Mm-hmm. Like you, people got weird pictures and stuff up. You're gonna look at them. Yeah. You know, make sure the sex toys are put away. Uh, no. I feel like there's a story here. 
There is a story. Because, you know, one of the questions I'm going to roll into is I need to hear the funniest and craziest real estate stories. Because I know, <laughs> I feel like you, you are going to have some good ones. I, yeah, you know, I kind of figured you were going to go there. And this, is, <laughs> this is why the sex toys. <laughs> Just the sex room? I have no, a pleasure room. No. No, that's a regular swing. So, you just strap in. <laughs> <laughs> there was a house that had a red room. If you read what Right. I didn't, but I assume yeah. it's the the, this, yeah. the the and it turned. It wasn't so. I had heard of my one of my really good friends' bosses who had one, and the only reason we knew about that was because a contractor friend of ours had like their team had put it in, and he was like at the bar one night. He was like, "Yes, yeah, so put a red room in at your boss's <laughs> house," and you're like, "What? Not my boss's? It? No, oh. no, didn't see that one." But I did see recently went into a house and. Um, the agent had noted in there, like, pleasure room and basement. And it had, like, a separate code and stuff to get in. And you go into it? And so I didn't say anything to my people. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, but they were my friends. Oh, okay. So I this is one thing, like, with my real estate career so far, I have, all of my clients have been friends. Yeah. Um, honestly, up until just my ones today... Every client of mine has been from the bars. Everybody wants to always talk about, oh, Hilda's always in the bar. She's got plenty of time to do the bar life. Doesn't want to work. The networking that linebacker and mulligans have brought me is like, I can't even. Linebacker to me, and everyone knows this is my family anyway, but like all of my almost $4 million worth of business has come from my bar friends. So, but this other couple that I've been working with, um, two, one is from. Um, I used to sling cell phones too back in the day. I worked for Centennial Wireless and oh snap, the, yeah. So we got some stories okay. there too. Oh yeah. But so I'm working with clients that I intern because I interned there in college, and them, and then another job that I had at Brown Mackey of people I was working with, and those were the ones we were in the house. And I was like, okay, so do you want to see it or not? And they're like, what? And I was like, oh yeah, this wasn't in the listing. I was like, the room downstairs. <laughs> I was like, it's a pleasure room. And they were like, they said, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to see a pleasure room. I mean, I'd, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, sign me up. It was amazing. So like, what it are, was so... beautiful. <laughs> like, it was like, had this plush, huge bed. Was it, like, it just, like, as I picture, like, a had, big circular bed that spins it around? It wasn't oh, circular. Okay. It was this huge king, but it had, like, the four pillar post because it had whips and, like, I mean, all of it. Everything. In high end, you could tell. Like, I mean, like the glass cases for everything. But then you go to another house and some chick forgot to take her shower toys out. Toys? Yeah. So like a whole, just a slew of penetrables <laughs> just left in a bathtub. Yeah. So I take it they probably we, skipped on that house probably. <laughs> we laughed really hard. Maybe took some pictures. <laughs> I, I would assume, yeah. And then we left. <laughs> so I've also heard this did not happen to me. But I had a colleague of mine. So sometimes when um, a house that has tenants in it, that renters that maybe aren't very happy <laughs> that their landlord is selling their property, mm. will do anything and everything. I feel like there was a movie that somebody... uh, The Step Brothers. Yes. When yes, he's yes, in the two guys plans, he goes, hey, neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well... These people, they're not supposed to be there. I'm so sorry because I can't stop laughing <laughs> thinking of it. So I honestly don't know what I would have done walking in. Um, but they walk in and they're there, the tenants, and they're all naked. <laughs> like, Just sitting? I think they were like, one was like laying in bed. I think one was sitting on their laying on the couch. <laughs> what do you do? I, you know, I don't know. I think you just politely back out slowly, like, don't touch anything, but... You just go, well, we're going to have to also get naked. We're going to do a tour of the house. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really new to the whole, like, what's in people's houses type thing, you know. I will tell you, I've had some crazy things happen at the closing table, though. So that was my job for 10 years is I did the title side. So after the contract sign and you go and sign all that paperwork. Oh, the, so you were the one that's the stack yes. of paperwork? Good and I Lord. went over all of it. I also worked up all the numbers for the settlement statements and, you know, all this stuff. So this was early in my career. Um, I worked at all three major title companies. I called myself the title company whore. Um, so this is my early days at Meridian. And... We have this um, client come in, 
And it was right when Indiana went to the paper driver's licenses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he walks in, pulls up in his green Jag, walks in. He's got his doctor um, badge on from Memorial. And then he hands me the paper license. Well, there's no picture on it. So we have to have picture ID. So, But I, you know, so I took his badge. Well, the problem was that the driver's, the paper driver's license, this was like a Thursday or something, the paper driver's license expired on Saturday. And which meant the bank wasn't going to get the package back probably till Monday. Oh, okay. So I called our attorney, the um, Meridian's attorneys, and they said, for your notary purposes, we're fine with it. Like, you know, you've got his picture on there. Yeah. We're okay, but you might want to call the bank. So I called the bank, and they said, no, like, we need him to either go get a new driver's license or his passport. And he was foreign. And so I went out and explained the situation. And there's some cultures that, um, and it's nothing, they're not being rude. He's Middle Eastern. They don't talk to women. Right. You right. know, they're not supposed to look them mm-hmm. in the eye. You know, it's just whatever. And he was. And so he's talking to his agent, kind of, you know, talking. And I'm like, um, do you have your passport? And he said, I don't have one. And immediately the agent just spewed. He goes, well, how did you get here? Because he knew he was foreign, you know, and this guy just kind of gets weird. He says some things in a, in a different language. He throws papers at me and he walks out. And I'm like, what in the what just happened? Like, and I can't remember if at that time I brought up the fact, because he said he didn't have one. And I said, and he said something about not being a U.S. citizen. And then someone was like, well, how did you get, and I looked at his loan officer and they were like, he had a driver's license, though, when he applied for the loan. And if you don't know this, you have to be a U.S. citizen to have yeah, a, to driver's a driver's license. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So stuff just wasn't, and it was marked on his, um, but it was also marked on his loan application that he was a U.S. citizen. So I'm like, okay, something's not right. Like 45 minutes later, all of a sudden, I get a phone call at my desk. They're like, Dr. So-and-so is back to see you. I looked at everybody and said, please tell my family I love them. Because I'm like, this, <laughs> I'm just, might be I'm just, this just might be might it. Be like, it. whatever. <laughs> and I walk out, and he has this folder with him, and he throws it at me. And he goes, are you fucking happy? And I just, you know, it took me by surprise. I mean, I'm trying to be, like, not, like, you know, kind of go off on him. And I open it up, and there in front of me, signed by Papa Bush himself are his asylum papers. We have been hiding him since 1991. So he couldn't go get another driver's license because he was waiting on his handler in Washington, D.C. to get him a new one. What? Yes. So, so like, 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 he had, he, so I like, we figured it because the loan officer and my attorneys and stuff were like, you will never see documents like that ever again. They were original asylum papers signed by President Bush. And like, and like, it was unbelievable. He was a doctor in the Middle East. I'm sure you've heard, you know, unfortunately over women are raped a lot of times and their husbands or after their husbands have sex with them, they will sew them their vaginas back up to make sure they're not cheating on them. Whoa. Yeah. So there is obviously a lot of damage done. He was a doctor in the Middle East that would do the repair surgeries and help oh, so okay. terrorist groups were after him. He was on a hit list. Oh, shit. So we'd been hiding him here. He didn't have a passport because he wasn't allowed to leave. Yeah. So, like, so it gets a little bit even more crazy. Like, that Tuesday, then next week, he's back. He's signing his paperwork and everything. And no kidding, a month later, the house was for sale and he was gone. Gone where? Well, they, they said he's prob- they probably had to move him because he had been compromised. Oh, <laughs> that's bananas. Isn't that crazy? But then you think about it and you're like, holy shit. I bet that there's... And if that closing would have been scheduled Tuesday of that week and not Thursday, it never would have come yeah. up because the bank would have gotten the stuff back before the paper one expired. But it was only because it was going to fall in this 72-hour period where it was going to, the license would be expired. That's crazy. Yeah. So note to everyone who's getting ready to buy a house, so make sure your driver's licenses are not expired because the title, that you have to have a valid driver's license when you go sign all your paperwork. And don't argue with them when they ask for it. Just give over your driver's Just license. Just get the thing and you, and you want to 
walk and throw it right at you? Is no, that what? No, just just you know, <clears throat> don't ask questions. Just they're they just need it. Chuck it. I got you. Know, you. Just so let throw them take it. A, let them take a copy of it. They're gonna give it right back to you. Like, and yes, you're gonna be there for a while. It takes. So in in my in my approach and my team, I know does this too, and I'm. I'm going to say a majority of your agents out there as well in our heads. When we look at a house and we think in this market, my people more than likely you'll get 260,000 for it. Two years ago, they would have gotten 225. We're going to put it on the market for 225, 230 and let the market itself drive it up. So, but appraisers are now on the hook too. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of instances. There's a house in um, Edison Park recently that sold for 170000 and it made my stomach turn. And I called the agent and I said, did it appraise for that? And she said, no, it appraised for one fifty, but the people still paid 20000 ca- $20, in cash over it. We don't have, we're not privy to that information. So we don't know what they appraised for unless we reach out and ask. And that's, it kind of makes you feel a little better that they're only praising at 150 because that's what the banks are saying that they're worth and that's mm-hmm. where it should be. Mm-hmm. But if someone's willing to pay another twenty thousand dollars over, yeah, because you can't do anything about it. Yeah, because somebody's because it's gonna gone. It would have been gone if you just yeah. It's things with real estate. It's worth what anybody is willing to pay for it. Right. Be very careful who you purchase real estate with, especially if you are not married. Yeah. Because the minute you put any one else's name on that deed with yours, you owe them half, unless it is specifically stated. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many, how many people I have seen finagle their way and manipulate and get their name on that deed, mm-hmm. and six months later go, I want out. And you're like, okay, get the fuck out then. And they're like, I'll take half. Yeah. And th- you can't sell the property Mm-mm. without their signature. You can't get their name off of it without pretty much paying them out, refinancing. Like, very seldom is someone going to say, oh, yeah, just go ahead and do a quick claim deed and take my name off of that $300,000 piece of property yeah. that I <clears throat> technically get $150,000 off. Like, I had, a, I had a woman sitting at the closing table, now going back to funny stories, yeah. and money is the root of all evil. If it's one thing that I've learned sitting at a closing table, it's sad. Yeah. Um, people make sure you have wills. Um, if you are older, make sure your properties, your parents, your grandparents um, have them. And I'm, I'm not an attorney. I'm just, my opinion, make sure mm-hmm. you don't, you know, talk to your legal staff and legal <laughs> your professionals. Legal, your legal staff. <laughs> if you have staff, get in touch with an attorney that can guide you better. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, um, your parents, grandparents, even yourself should own your properties and trusts because your trust owns it, not you as an individual. So if you get put into a nursing home or if something should happen, if you should get sued, anything like that, um, they can't take your property from you because you as an individual don't own it. Your trust owns it. So, but going back to the situation at a closing table, um, this woman and her husband were getting divorced. She had moved out. And um, per her attorney, had they had not sold the house yet um, due to they were figuring some things out. But if your name is attached to a loan, obviously to buy another piece of property is almost impos- impossible. So the father and mother were buying her. Thankfully, they were able to buy her a piece of property until the divorce was final and mm-hmm. she could get off and then she yeah. was going to pay them back. <clears throat> and this gentleman looks at me as we're signing all this paperwork because when you buy an investment property, which it was for him, the interest rate's higher, you have to yeah. put 20% down, like all this stuff. And he looks at me and he says, are you married? And I said, no, sir, I'm not. And he said, I'm going to tell you what I should have told her years ago. He said, fuck a diamond, get a deed. I was <laughs> dying. <laughs> Fuck a di- <laughs> that is a um, fuck a diamond, fuck a diamond get, a get a deed. Get a deed. <clears throat> Balling my fucking eyes on these damn rescue dog videos. Probably gonna have to be a good dog. Man, I tell you what, like I, I love man, a little baby pit bull is the cutest thing in the world. And I've never really been a dog guy, man. No. With these- I mean, just just because, just because I am, I was working retail house. So I was like, yeah, I get it. It was I, I could be at work from eight yep. to nine p.m. Uh, yeah, you know, and that's the worst. I always told yep. myself, I go, I'm not gonna be. Yep. I'm not going to be a, an animal owner. I yep. hate people like that that are animal owners, and they yep. just—they're just gone. That's it. Or they just 
leave their leave your animal outside, then you know I'd rather not. That's why I didn't get Herman know. until I moved back in with my parents because I was I was working the same sort of. And because he's too. the size of a Volkswagen. <laughs> That picture where he's like he's that is not a dog. I hope you know that's like it's like I don't even know. I was like I was like first of a Volkswagen. And I'm, right, right away, my first car was a Volkswagen a Jetta. <laughs> it, it pretty much is. Yeah. Maybe a Golf. <laughs> but dude, I'm like I'm like that looks like the stuffed animals you get at the fair. Yes. The way it was jumped yeah. up on it, I was like, mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He changed my life. He saved me. Yeah. Like I get a lot of sh- I get a lot of shit from a lot of people because I bought him. Yes, I bought him. Yes, I bought him from a breeder. But yes, I did my homework and research. And my mm-hmm. mom's, one of my mom's best friends in Illinois rescues and fosters dogs. And I went to her because I knew I wanted yeah. a doodle. And she said, there's nothing wrong. You just make sure you find the perfect breeder. And my breeder, she found me a breeder in Indianapolis called Hoosier Doodles. Right away. You, okay. Yeah, you were in. His name is Herman B. After... Herman B. Wells, the chancellor of IEU. Oh, that's badass. Yes. Now, his name is spelled H-E-R-M-A-N-N. I saw that. I saw that. So, because her man. I see where you're going yeah, there. <laughs> Herman B. for IU. And my other love of my life is my Indianapolis Colts, Peyton Manning. So, Peyton, he was supposed to be Peyton. But when Peyton went to the Broncos... And I'm still a Colts fan. I was like, I just don't see how I could name him Peyton and have him in, um, you know, cold stuff. It just didn't feel right. So the M-A-N-N is my little nod to Manning. Oh, I see it so, now. Yes. I get it. Yes. Okay. But I don't need, an, and like, her man, like, I'm telling you, that dog saved me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I would hate to go into a man and, like, and like not be... I would rather jump into a relationship unprepared than, than taking over an animal. Because here's the deal: check it out. There's, I, you know, there's, there's not a lot of chicks locked up in cages waiting to be waiting to be picked up. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'll take. Well, unfortunately, a, they actually really are. Well, well, I mean, that's that's a different. That's, you know, that's, that's, I think that's, that's, I think that's sex thing. trafficking. I don't know. If, I was like, oh, that's listen, we're not going to dabble that on the KQ no. show. <laughs> God, what are your thoughts on sex trafficking? Do a show on Law and Order SVU, and then we can talk about that. But <laughs> Elliot Stapler would have a lot. Just bring Hargitay in here, maybe. <laughs> See, she's somebody. She's oh, she's so like. She's got. If I talk to her, I'd be like, I, "What do you want? Do you want me? To, do you, you want to see my penis?" I don't even know. What I was like, she you can have it. Like, she's like a badass. Could you punch me just once? Yes. Don't, don't rule. I got some shit to do. But could you just like her, Mariska Hargate and um, Julia uh, Roberts to me are just like those women that I'm like, yes, queens, yes, like you. Julia Roberts because she's a redhead because there weren't a lot of redheads. Mm-hmm. You know, like cute. Like, it was like Punky Brewster was not cute. Like in the eighties, yeah, yeah no, 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 there really wasn't. Now Ariel, Little Mermaid, get off. Yeah, her. Like, yeah, she was the first. Yeah, but she's a cartoon. Yeah, you know. So Pretty Woman is my other. So Julia Roberts is just that strong. You know, she was a hooker and everything, <laughs> and just came out on top. Like, yeah, I just remember being all <laughs> sick. Like my mom, would, my, my mom would torture me because um, some days I said I want to go to school. You know, I was like a little fat kid. Some you, you, you get like bully or whatever. I was like, I'd rather just fake like I'm sick, stay home. I'm like, all right, well, no problem. Well, today uh, while I clean the house, I'm gonna turn on Dirty Dancing. Uh, yes. then, then I'm gonna follow that with Pretty Woman, and then the Bodyguard. I go. Oh my I God. would rather That's go amazing. to school. Really? I would rather someone. Oh I, come because, on. You know what I mean? A, a gr- look. Come. Those are three of the best soundtracks ever. That's because you don't have a pain attached <laughs> to your body. Okay. A prepubescent. I'm about to go through. You know, through puberty. I'd be like, all right, really. I'd rather just go to school. Then my mom caught me too. Then she, then she started putting on Jesus Christ Superstar, and I was like, I cannot I can't, do musicals. No. I'm not a musical guy. Me I can't. I can't. I I I I, I applaud them for their performance, but yes. if like if somebody I, goes, hey man, I got tickets to go see Hamilton, I'm like, good man, go. No, I was just gonna say though, have I you plays? Said, but I, I no, can't Hamilton, do plays. Hamilton. I can't do. Hamilton's on Disney Plus. I'll give you my. I'll give you my log. I have Disney <laughs> Plus. I will tell you. I will not watch. Well, it. you have to have Disney Plus because you have to watch Rookie of the Year at least a couple times. At Rookie of the Year. Yeah, okay. Garden Hoser, <laughs> Rosenberger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of shows I can't like. I keep man. I remember. I remember actually. I took me to a symphony. I went to a fucking symphony. I love symphonies though. It I'm was this was like one that. of those ones though that were like so long. And, and a drink sweat. for like twelve dollars, and she's always like, "Why do you have to drink so much?" I'm like, "Well, because I don't like your face." You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's so great though. No, you're honest. Like, it's like I don't like your face. <laughs> like you get, and that's a lot of people that way. They get in these relationships where they're just they just settle, yes. you know. And it, and, yes. and it happens to a lot of cats. Like when a lot of dudes I know, when they turn thirty, they go, "Damn, 
I'm 30. I gotta, I gotta get a wife. I gotta have a kid. I'm yeah. Like, but, but, but you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. I mean, there's no, there's nothing that says no. that, you know. No. And, and when you force it to happen, you know, that just means that, you know, yeah. give it six to eight months, you're gonna force another kid because, <laughs> just because it, that's gonna fix it. Yeah. That's yeah. The, yeah that's that's the worst. Yeah. yeah. And not you know not everybody's like that, but, but you know we all. I mean, I've seen it. Yeah. Exactly. It's one of those things where you're like. Man, like you know, I'm like ah, just like you just, and you can't, you can't tell people that either, right? right? And they really hate when you say it at their wedding. But you know, it's... <laughs> I've only been kicked out of three. No, I don't go to them. I told, I told this girl. How I know. many weddings have you been in? How many have you been in? Yeah. You know, if I can do it, like I'm always sweaty. So yeah. you put me. And everybody gets in these churches that has no AC in the middle, of, like fucking Laporte right. County. And they're like, yeah, we're over here in yeah. La Lumiere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So it was, it was awesome. And my brother, I did my brother's, but it was so hot. I felt bad for my brother. I was, I was so hot. Gosh. It's 97 degrees. It's California, Napa I mean, Valley. Yeah. And like it was time for like the, the best man speech. And it was, uh, my family was my dad, mom, grandma. Her family. So like I have a slew of jokes, but I'm like, Hang on. right before I go up to my brother's, like, hey, rem- just, just a reminder. Um. <laughs> My wife's mom's an ordained minister. Yeah. Um, so I go, whoa, right? Yeah. I have a speech set up, but then when you're looking at all these people, looking yeah. at you, judging, I go, all right, well, um, let's give it up for the food, huh? A little round of applause for the food. Cheese and wine's good. Yeah, I go, and, uh, you know, and people working here, uh, thanks for that. Keep in mind, I'm soaked. Wait, like, yeah. underneath, I'm just like a, you can hear me walking around like a sponge. Just things are just moist yeah. and damp. yeah. So what's really funny though is I thought you would be the one person because we know each other, but we don't really, you know, know ins and outs and stuff. But you've always kind of reminded me as far as like you love your friends. Your friends are your fucking family. Mm -hmm. And I'm the same way. I don't, I think I was in middle school before I realized that friends and coworkers weren't technically family yeah because i grew up my parents are both not from here mm-hmm. so like their co-workers and friends were always over for holidays and yeah, I just yeah, think yeah. that's why we you know so earlier and a lot of people i think it's safe to say know this about me i'm not your typical girl's girl like girls and i um i have wonderful girlfriends though don't get me wrong but for the most part i'm the sitting in my sweatpants watching the game on sunday drinking beers like mm-hmm. yeah. talking shit whatever I have been, been in 18. 18. No, you're talking, sorry, you're like, you're talking like, like bridesmaid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Like, yeah, not attended. Three of them for my guy friends. I was at, well, four of them actually. No, oh, did, um, did, did, did you suit it up too? You know, no, I was actually on, a bridesmaid on, um, in the dress on, in all of them. Oh, okay. Um, one of them I did a reading. Kevin Stivers, I did a reading oh, for Stivers, his. Oh, Stivers, yeah. Which Stivers was just a little bit different than everyone else is. Um, his wife, not from here, you know, they met in med school and all this stuff. So for a girl to kind of just embrace me. But Kevin had also told her um, when they met that if I didn't like her, that they would stop yeah. dating. Listen, <laughs> like, we need to. The first time I met her, she came up to me and like I loved her. I mean, the minute I met yeah. her, I just, uh, she's just phenomenal. I cannot stay, say enough. Corey Stiver, I love you. I love you. I love you. But she literally comes up to me um, right after I told Kevin, I told Stiver, I said, you fuck this up. I'm going to kill you. Because like, <laughs> she's just the shit. Like, she's funny. She's like, she's a smart, like yeah. just an independent chick. Like everything that I want all my guy friends to have. Yeah. And she comes up to me and she's getting ready to go hang out with her friends for the night. And she's like, I, I got to ask you something. And I'm like, what? She goes, do you like me? She's like, because he told me if you don't like me, we're done. And I just need to know. And I was like. <laughs> I paid a lot of money for this fucking dress. <laughs> I was like, you know, they just started dating. I was like stone faced. I was like, if it makes you feel better, I, you know, I get all nervous and stuff. Because I'm like, she's so perfect. Mm-hmm. I Like, I don't want her to like not like me. And I was like, if it makes you feel better, I just told him if you mess this up, I'm going to kill him, you know. And she was like, yes. She hugs me. Yeah. Pieces out and goes and hangs out with her friend for the rest of the night. And I was like, yes, yes. So when she called, when they called me to ask me to do a reading, I was just like. Wow, like it's very odd for girls to embrace other girls. Yeah, yeah. I should, yeah. So, I, so I had, I had this, I had this, um, this customer come in and uh, was describing OnlyFans to me, like in detail, like some of the stuff that uh, they were. I mean, it was a customer I've known for a while. Whatever. But he was saying, like, there's 
he's like, dude, you get on there and like, there's the weirdest fetishes. So there's this one fetish, like a, like a huge women. I'm talking whale size. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Very, very yeah. big women, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's this chick that made like like thirty grand a month. All she does Wait, is hold take, on. yeah, yeah, a month. You hear what I'm saying? Thirty a month. Thirty grand a month. All she does is she mashes food onto her naked body, right? Just ma- like like takes a whole cake, whole birthday cake, smash. I'm talking huge. When I say huge, I'm saying these are over four hundo. Like okay, like not not the move the wall to take them out of their house, but but pretty soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and it's it's and I'm like, what 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 is that? For? He's like, oh, and there's also ones where you get a big chick that just they aggressively sit down on watermelons. And they break them. And there's people, okay, 30,000 means, I mean, I don't know, I think it's like 20 bucks a month. I think it's what, like a, a basic, I don't know if it, Okay, so I'm I sure was just going to ask this, because I'm, I'm, I'm new to even really knowing what OnlyFans is. So you pay, like, can you go on there without paying anything and see anything? No, I don't know. Okay. I, 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 all okay. I know, because there's nobody I follow on there or anything, yeah. so, um, I, I make, besides myself. Uh, no, I, it's, I, I think it's like because they were doing the math for that okay. uh, for that cash me outside girl when she made a million dollars in a week or something. So I guess what it is is you can pay that person whoever you're watching. You, hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you do this. So I oh. guess there's I, 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 I'm not sure if okay, it's still yeah, the yeah, case. Yeah. A million and it was like a million and I think I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it was just a week working stuff and like we have customers come in that made a lot of money doing that. Really? Now keep in mind the people that make the most money are they're fucking on camera so. You know, more power to him. But my thing is, like, 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 that will be out. There's, like, if there's ever a time, like, like, if somebody's like, hey, Kyle, man, we, we'll give you $1.2 million a year, okay, but you got to fuck on camera. But, like, absolutely not. <laughs> Forever? Everybody I know will be like, hey, I seen that thing. <laughs> I saw you last week. You were fucking that loaf of bread in your kitchen. <laughs> and that was a mayonnaise. <laughs> but, it's, but it's weird. I mean, and I'm not, if I was it. To be honest with you, if I, if I, oh, one point two million a year, though. Dude, if I was a chick, though. Wait, and, one point. And, Kyle, come on, one point two million a year. For, no, I'm not fucking for one point two. No, I'm not even. <laughs> fuck, fuck money. Fuck money. <laughs> you know, to, to, then for the rest of my one point two million means after taxes you get about four hundred dollars. Um, so no, nah, fuck that. Hell no. I'll be like no, <laughs> no. But dude, it's it, it's crazy. Like we had customers coming. They just they just fucking they straight up them and their partner just bang aggressively and what? Yeah, you just bang on there and get paid. If I was a chick, I'd be like, yeah. Like I saw a funny, I saw a funny, I saw a funny TikTok. This this uh, this college uh, softball, yeah, this yeah, college yeah. softball player. Somebody posted her. She goes, it was like she's like a very innocent, like you know, like a regular like somebody's daughter, you know. And she and she, she goes, she goes, wait, um, one hundred twenty dollars for my softball pants? Yeah, yeah, I'll send a couple pair. Hang on, like just joking around, like she like like she was too innocent to know yeah. what what it was really for. Yeah, yeah, I only pay forty bucks. Yeah, seems like a profit. <laughs> Well, what would anybody be doing with these things? <laughs> what can they possibly be doing with these things? Man, that's just bananas. People are weird. They're, I mean, the sex fetishes and the impulses. I mean, I watch way too many Law & Order SVUs. I was about to say, you sound like you're... <laughs> like, way, like, I will not take an Uber by myself at night. Why? I would rather get a DUI than get raped. Does that does it happen with Uber drivers? Yes. No, no, no. In real life or on SVU? No. In I, real, I, I, I yes. Also, I also in don't know. real life, uh, there was um, um, a student in Tennessee who was extremely intoxicated, called an Uber, and just so happened, like, and how does this happen? I don't know. Like, I don't like. I always believe everything, quote unquote, happens for a reason. But why the universe would do this to someone, I really don't know. But literally, let's just say it was a black Malibu or something that she, a black Camry mm-hmm. that she's supposed to, you know, meet her Uber driver in. Um, there's a black Camry, and she walks up to it, and she was like, "Are you my Uber driver?" Whatever, and they were like, "Yep." Gets in the back seat. He brutally rapes her and murders her, like stabbed her like ungodly amount of time times and throws her in like a field somewhere. Like these sex predators are now hanging out and either being employed by them. Like, no. Well, no, it makes sense. Yeah, because no. if you have a black, yeah, because if you have any any camera right away, you're an Uber driver. So right? like you could just pull up somewhere and have somebody get in from a bar and yeah. yeah. And for how I found my ex-wife. For <laughs> <laughs> for a woman, too. She got in the wrong, got in the wrong car. 
I didn't rape her. She just, she, she just made me know. file bankruptcy. <laughs> that was, I mean, you know, that's just that they what They flipped the wrong way on that one. Uh, yeah, but like, crazy, but you though. think about it, you get in the back seat of these cars too, and they have like the child likes where they can lock you in. You can't get like. You don't rock no weapon though. You no, know, I don't. But I've um, been considering it more and more now, especially with my job. Um, like I said, I've been as of right now, all of my um, clients have been friends. But, and I'm fortunate, and all agents in this area are fortunate to have a board, our local uh, board of realtors, who safety is a big concern. Yeah. Um, I think, what is it, like 63% of real estate agents are women, but... Um, You're going into a house with a stranger. You're going into into a, possibly an abandoned house, like there's nobody living in there absolutely. with a stranger. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, they do base... My, off of that. Yeah, it's, uh, I it's worked different. really closely. My co- my amazing co-listing agent on my Mulligan sale and just a very good friend over the years in the industry, Jen Arizmendi, who's an amazing, amazing investment agent, um, deals with a lot of houses that are abandoned and stuff. And she taught me um, quite a few things my first couple weeks when I was riding around with her, too. She was like, never lead anyone into a room. Mm-hmm. You know, let them go. Don't go down in the basement. Um one of the, don't wear your hair up in a ponytail to give them something to grab. Oh wow! You know, like and never you, even thought about yeah, that. and you really kind of think about it, and it's true. And she's like, and never ever ever ignore your gut feeling. She's like, if you meet someone and the hair on the back of your neck stands up, there is nothing wrong with opening the door and saying, I'm going to take a phone call or I'm going to check some email out here. If you have any questions, come ask yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and stuff like that because it does happen, and um. We have an app. Um, it's called Forewarn that they got for us to where we can check um, phone numbers. You know, if someone calls. So if you were to call me and say, "Hey, I saw your listing for whatever. I want to come see it." Like I can run your phone number. It gives oh, me okay. your criminal a quick criminal background check. Um, a lot of agents, men and, or women, will have their these clients now meet them at their office ahead of time, take a copy of their driver's license, because if you think about it. If someone's going to give you their driver's license and give you a copy of it, more right. than likely, yeah, they're, yeah. they're just either a real sicko, sicko they're going to kill you no matter what, and you're just done, yeah. or... Yeah, but I think even... even but even you're a, not going to usually give up your info. Not a... Not a, not a, not a uh, somebody that has intent. Like, if you had... Right. You, you wouldn't... You wouldn't. Yeah. Right. So... Only because, you know, that says... I've, I've, I've shown a couple houses, like, for my t- a couple of my teammates or before, you know, other clients that I didn't know to where I like little legit, like I'm like text my mom and I'm like, Hey, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is the time. This is who I'm meeting. This is the car they're driving. Like if you don't hear from me by eight fifteen, call the police, <laughs> like, you know, like, and I will, and I'll drop a pin and stuff like that. But I've been like that though. Um, even with my friends with like when Tinder came out, and they're going and they're hooking up. Like, m- more kudos to anybody that wants to do that. I wish I was more, like, out there and more open to stuff like that, but I'm just not. But uh, my thing wasn't that you're going to go have sex with some random person. And my thing was, are you going to be safe? Like, and I'm not talking account. Like, where are you going? Do you know this person? I want to know their name. I want to mm-hmm. know, know what house you're going to or wherever you're going because, no. I'm sure the little, little Wayne Mona Lisa song. I mean, a little, that's crazy. You just meet some chick, and then all of a sudden she takes you back to her place, and there's just a seven dudes with guns, like, well, shit. Oh, shit. Um, Stuff right. like this happens, and I just feel like it would happen to me, so I just start, I try and stay. Well, see, but that, like, because, I have because, weird yeah, hang-ups like that, though. But checking up with that, I feel like that that's the smart way to think, you know? Because there is those moments, like, man, like the... Like when you get a that's that's the worst feeling. That is literally your body's defense man. Because when you get that feel, like I've met some people, and I'm like that motherfucker is something's wrong. Like a de- like devious. Like I mean, you can see you can see people's eyes, man. Yeah. When and it's like it's like you, man. It's like you get that like I get this like I can't I can't watch I can't watch rape scenes in movies. I, I can't, can't either. I can't do it. It's it's, it's uh, my biggest fear in life. Yeah, it's because I mean it, my brain thinks that's my mom. Or, like, yes. like, I, I can't like it makes it makes me angry. Like it makes like your skin crawl. It make it gives you that feeling of like like pure rage of like something's wrong. You know, same thing like uh, abusing kids or something like like it makes you so and I and I get why they do it because it does you you want to get that reaction out of somebody. Man, that shit. And I then when can't. you when you feel it in real life, man, I've I've had it happen a couple times. I'm like, man, something is something like you, it, it's like a, a spidey sense. And it's way before yes. it happens. You're like something. Something's not right. Something and is I, not I, I'm right. I'm pretty sure that, that has saved my fucking life so many times. Really? Yeah. You, you, nobody really knows. Like, it was a a Reddit post. They were like, uh, 
you have probably almost died so many times in your life. Like, um, you were the second car when that semi went through the intersection yes. or, or you were the second person in line at that weird guy fall, you know? So yeah, it, it's crazy. But yeah, those, those, uh, those moments are real. That's like they, one of those things. Yeah. They really, really are. And like, and thankfully nothing too crazy has ha- happened to any of my friends that have done those apps and stuff like that. But I did have a, a very close friend of mine and I won't, I'm going to try not to give up too information so people can't really figure out who is she, who it was because she's super private. But she was attacked in her apartment and um, oh, shit. beaten and um, left basically bloody and alone and all this stuff. And she still to this day blames herself because she fell asleep on her couch and didn't clo- lock her sliding glass doors on her back deck. And the police to this day, they never caught who it was. But um, she said she woke up on the couch, and it was a Friday night. It was the first Friday. Her roommate was out of town on um, on business. It wasn't here in town. It was out of town. And um, she just thought, I'm going to stay in for a Friday night, whatever. Fell asleep on the couch watching a movie. Uh, woke up, turned the movie off, walked upstairs to her bedroom, turned the movie on. And she said, looking back on it, it was a condo or a townhouse. So they shared a wall. Um, with the next door neighbor, they were an end unit, but shared the one wall with the stairs. And she said, now looking back on it, I heard him coming up the stairs, but just assumed it was the neighbors, you know, cause you can hear. And she said, it was just one of those things. She was laying in bed watching TV and she could just feel somebody looking at her. And she looked into the doorway and there was somebody standing there with a mask on the whole thing. He bum rushed the bed. He took the end of the, um, uh, comforter put like she went to grab her cell phone that was on he knocked it out of her hand pulled it over her head and repeatedly punched her in the face and all stuff drug her downstairs because she said she heard someone else downstairs and they just kept asking where the money was and she was just like what are you talking about you know like this is a chick never has cash on her anyway you know and all this stuff and he took they ended up um, ransacking kind of the house the townhouse they took her cell phone they took her laptop and she had no way to call the police or anything. So she knocked on the neighbor's door and thankfully they answered and, you know, they called the police and the police got there and they were like, can we call somebody for you? And the point of the story though is too, is nobody knows anybody's phone numbers anymore. Yeah, no. I don't know numbers. Yeah. Right. And she's living in a, in a big city. So her family's not there. Like she said, cause I was like, why didn't you call me? She's like, first of all, I don't even know your phone number off, you know, by heart. And she's like, plus you're 300 miles away. But, um, she thought to herself, wait, my, my work laptop, maybe they didn't take my work laptop. And thankfully they didn't. And her, her roommate and her roommate's boyfriend had just broken up. And that room, that boyfriend, ex-boyfriend had emailed her, my friend to say, Hey, we're in the same industry. Here's my contact info. Mm -hmm. Just being kind of out of it. She, you know, calls this guy and, he ended up, he did, he went to the hospital, he sat with her and stuff. And that year for Christmas, like, she gives us the emergency phone t- numbers to think. And she's like, put this somewhere. She's like, because you never know when you're going to need to call someone. Yeah. And mm. since then, too, I think the Spidey sense, like, you just kind of, like, that's why I won't take an Uber by myself. I just won't that do makes it. Sense. it just, I mean, yeah. It's just one of those things. And, like, the, when the hairs on the back of your neck do stand up, but the police to this date think that um, she was going to a concert and needed to get cash out of an ATM. And she went to the ATM and they fe- they think that they like followed, followed her, her from home. There. And, you know, she did leave the back door open. But Man, it, like, that'd it's be, crazy. Be scary as shit to be a female. Because I don't even think about somebody. Uh, somebody told me one time uh, I was being just uh, I just said a selfish man statement. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I was like. Nobody's attacking people at the river walk. I'm down there at 10, 10 o'clock. But I realize I'm a six foot, you know, man. And I'm down there doing like my little fucking like karate runs and shit, you know, running backwards, doing squats, you know, yeah. fighting a tree and shit. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and this was like a, a five foot two girl that said it like, nobody's out there doing, nobody's going to attack you. And then she, well, that's because you're six foot and you work out and you're a man. I go. Wow, I did not. I know it's a dumb thing not to think about, but I was like, look, I was like, damn, you're five foot. If I was, I mean, yeah, you're you're a small ass girl like that. Yeah, that's that's why. I mean, I'd have a weapon on me at all. Like, I mean, I'm not saying you know, 
like a gun or no. something, but I would say like nunchucks. Yes. Throwing. I can give you a couple throwing stars for you, Lee. Um, pepper spray mm. or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> just, you just go. <laughs> slap me. Oh god. <laughs> Man Please stabbing help. his juggler with throwing that you just on you're just sitting there with a ninja suit on when he came in. Which, home. which ninja turtles had the uh had the stars? Uh none of them. No. But they all they all did. No, th there was no there was a but they, 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 there was like a backup thing there. Yeah. Had. Yeah. Because I feel like I'd be like, Please hold why I put my blue <laughs> I put my down the She just cried <laughs> with a Mikey on. Yeah, I used to have total squirrel moment. I used to have a yellow like rain like uh trench coat. And there was one night at Backer, I have so, Backer stories, like, like my favorite thing in the world, but it was a couple of my friends and uh, they called me April O'Neil. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like the next morning, our Facebook status <laughs> were like... Now, which, which, which Facebook? Because I'd like to look these up. You're not sure? You, you, you know. It was the Katie. It was definitely okay. the Katie. <laughs> the Kate one gets kind of boring because I feel like... I feel like my heyday. So here's the thing. I'm the oldest of three. And my parents, but my dad was a party guy, like 70s stoner, all that. My mom was the good Catholic girl. Um, my mom grew up in uh, Chicago in Little Italy. My dad grew up in a redneck hillbilly town of 400 people in southern Illinois. Like, dad's been there, done that. There ain't yeah, no yeah, 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 yeah. shit past him, yeah. right? So... <laughs> Here I am, the oldest of three. Like, the, I was so scared to get a drinking ticket or anything like that. Like, in high school, I had I had a period of time where I was kind of not hanging out with the right crew. And that was, like, before, like, the summer before freshman year. And then I remember being at a party freshman year, um, and Kowalski was such a dick. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Okay. I'm like, I was going to say a fuck face. But okay. I'm like, all right, yeah. Okay. We're on the same page then. I've had a couple whiskeys. I'm going to say it. He was a dick. Yeah. And, you know, the no tolerance thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just there. And I got suspended. I I uh, I made the varsity basketball team as a freshman and the varsity softball team as a freshman. So he suspended me for, like, two or three games of – um, basketball. And now, mind you, I played freshman JV and varsity, and it was three of each. Mm -hmm. So after that, I got, like, super, I was like, no, like, I'm an athlete, I'm yeah. a nerd, like, this is just who I'm, I'm gonna be. Get like, my, fr my Friday nights was date, was, I spent most of my Fridays with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters on 2020. <laughs> like, we was best friends, okay? And also, that's why you're not on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your profile. I spent most of my Friday nights. Swipe left. Or right, I don't know which way you swipe anymore. I don't either. I'm not sure. But touche. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, like, I went to college then, met my Jasper girls. I mean, they just grow them very special in Jasper, Indiana, let me tell you. And they are just phenomenal people that taught me how to drink whiskey. I was, I was in, you know, I would, I probably had more fun in college when I was in Jasper, Indiana than when I was actually. <laughs> Just crazy, you say Jasper and Indiana. Yes. The third time I've heard of Jasper and Indiana in my life. Yes. <laughs> You're I mean, like, it's amazing. Yeah, I should really. Look at a general store. I mean, I should really tell you about the time partying in Canada with some people from Jasper, Indiana. Uh, like, major well. league baseball players and, like, crazy stuff. But, so, but I was also scared to get a drinking ticket in Bloomington then, right? Because my parents had, you know, just kind of been, like, kind of strict with me. And then I pay for my brother's two of them within 24 hours when he's in Bloomington, you know, like, but I didn't have an older sibling. So my fun in the bars really happened when I came back. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where and I that's met you again. That's where we met. Yeah. That's when we really met. And the love I have respect I have for the linebacker lounge. Mm. Tune in next week for part two of episode 11 like to thank our sponsors, Poo Tips. They're just like Q-Tips, except you don't put these in your mouth when you're done. <laughs>